The Math Center presents Solving an Inequality with One Variable. In this presentation, we'll start by answering the question, what is an inequality? Then we'll cover what it means to solve an inequality and talk about how to solve inequalities. Next, we'll cover an important rule that we use to solve inequalities. And finally, we'll bring it all together with some examples. An inequality is an expression that uses the greater than or less than symbols. The symbols with the line underneath mean greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. The examples here show how to use the symbols. The first example is read, two is less than five. The smaller end of the symbol points to the smaller number. The next example is read, 21 is greater than or equal to 21. This works because the line on the bottom tells us that the number might also be equal. The second two examples are of interest to us here because they have variables in them. The third example says, x is less than or equal to 17. Since x is a variable, we don't know what number it represents, but the inequality tells us that whatever number it is, it takes on a value less than or equal to 17. The last example is what is known as a compound inequality because it has two sides. Our variable a is in the middle and the inequality says that a is greater than six but less than or equal to 12. What does it mean to solve an inequality? To solve an inequality, you will look for all the values that make the inequality a true statement. For example, if we have x is less than or equal to five, this means that all the numbers less than or equal to five are solutions to this inequality. This is a bit different from a linear equation where we usually end up with just one solution. In this case, we will have a whole range of numbers. When we write out the solution to an inequality, we need to show all the numbers that are solutions. So we use interval notation. We put the smaller of the two numbers on the left and the larger of the two numbers on the right, separated by a comma. If you don't have a smaller number, you would use negative infinity, like we did here. If you don't have a larger number, we use positive infinity. If an endpoint is included, we use square brackets. In this case, five is included because our inequality is less than or equal to. If the number is not included, we use a parenthesis. Whenever you have infinity, you use parentheses. We can visualize this set of numbers by using a number line. On the number line, our solutions would be indicated by a closed circle on five and an arrow going to the left of five. The closed circle shows that five is included in our solution set, and the arrow shows that all numbers less than five are included. Solving an inequality is very similar to solving an equation. You can use the same rules for solving inequalities that you do for solving equations. You can add or subtract the same value on both sides, or you can multiply or divide the same value on both sides. If you have a compound inequality, you should do the same operation on all sides of the inequality. In other words, if you have an expression between two values, then if you add a number to one part of the compound inequality, you should do the same to all parts. Let's take a look at an example. We'll solve x minus two is less than or equal to one. We can solve this just like we do with an equation by isolating x on one side and moving all the other numbers to the other side. We are subtracting two from the left side. So the first thing I'm going to do is add two to both sides to get rid of the negative two. When I do that, the left side simplifies to x, and the right side simplifies to three. one plus two, 
which is 3. We can express our answer as x is less than or equal to 3. To write this solution in interval notation, it will be helpful to draw a number line, shade in the circle over the number 3, and then shade in everything that's less than or equal to 3, so everything to the left. So the interval becomes negative infinity to 3. We use a parenthesis on negative infinity and a close bracket on 3. There is one important difference between solving inequalities and solving equations. When solving an inequality, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the direction of the inequality symbol. Here's an example to show how that works. We'll solve negative 3x is greater than or equal to 15. We need to isolate x, so we'll divide both sides of this inequality by negative 3. When we divide both sides by negative 3, we need to also change the direction of the inequality. On the left side, the negative 3s cancel. On the right, we have 15 divided by negative 3, which is negative 5. So the result is x is less than or equal to negative 5. Let's put this rule into action with another example. Here we have 7 minus 3x is less than 13. We want to isolate x. So we'll start by subtracting 7 from both sides. The 7 cancels on the left side, and we're left with negative 3x. And on the right side, we have 13 minus 7, which gives us 6. In order to get x by itself, I now need to divide both sides by negative 3. The negative 3s on the left cancel. And on the right, I have 6 divided by negative 3, which is negative 2. Since I divided by a negative, I have to switch my sign. I now have x is greater than negative 2. This is my solution. We can write this solution using interval notation. We plot a negative 2 on the number line, and since we want greater than, we shade everything to the right, which goes off into infinity. So our solution is from negative 2 to positive infinity. We use a parenthesis at negative 2 to show that we are strictly greater than and do not include the negative 2. In our final example, we'll look at how to solve a compound inequality. We have 7 is less than or equal to 5 minus 2x is less than 11. Since we want to get x by itself, we'll look at the middle part of the inequality. Remember that anything we do here will have to do to the other parts of the inequality. We'll start by subtracting 5 from each part. 7 minus 5 gives us 2, and 11 minus 5 gives us 6. And for the middle, the 5s cancel, so we're left with negative 2x. To isolate x, we'll divide each part of the inequality by negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 gives us negative 1 on the left, and 6 divided by negative 2 gives us negative 3 on the right. In the middle, the negative 2s cancel, and we're left with x. Be careful, though. We divide it by a negative number, so each inequality symbol needs to be flipped over. On the left, we have 2 divided by negative 2, which gives us negative 1. And on the right, we have 6 divided by negative 2, which gives us negative 3. In the middle, the negative 2s cancel, and we're left with x. This gives us the solution of negative 1 is greater than or equal to x, which is strictly greater than negative 3. To write this in interval notation, you start with the smaller number, which is negative 3. 
we use parentheses since negative 3 is not included. Then negative 1 goes on the far right with a square bracket since it is included. Thank you for watching this presentation on solving an inequality with one variable.